important things like body temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, and excretion, that these were inverted compared to sighted people. The timing of these events and patterns were inverted compared to sighted people. Since that time, there have been many, many, many more publications, including in science, as well as a lot of really seminal research by Professor Josephine Arendt and Professor Deborah Skeen here at the Surrey University, who have really characterized very well non-24 hour sleep-wake disorder. And there's also been a number of research articles that have come out of Marburg, as well as uh, Paris, Professor Leger. Non-24 is a serious, severe, and chronic circadian rhythm disorder. People with non-24, as I mentioned, are unable to entrain or synchronize their circadian clock to the 24-hour day. For people with non-24, they have sleep-wake problems. They're not able to fall asleep when they want to. They have trouble staying asleep. And they have trouble waking up at the time that they may want to. It's a timing issue, as I already mentioned. And they have excessive daytime sleepiness where they have really strong urges to fall asleep and they may have to take naps or drink a lot of caffeine to overcome them. But they will, they will have very strong urges to sleep during the day. Now these problems are cyclical because if they're delaying every day, if the circadian rhythms are delaying, there will be periods when they're well aligned with the 24-hour day, day and then periods where they're completely misaligned. So the sleep-wake problems are not always the same. They're changing constantly because their circadian rhythms are changing. And I've heard some patients complain that that's a problem for them, that they're not able to plan when maybe their wedding would be or when they should defend their thesis or when they should go on a trip because they don't know what they'll be feeling like at that time. So the with these symptoms is that it causes clinical distress um, for the patients. They, they have impairment in their social and occupational functioning, which can be very devastating for them. In the 28 EU countries, there are approximately 110,000 people who are affected by non 24 hour disorder. This number is derived by several statistics that I'd like to spend a little bit of time on because I think they're relevant for your constituents. According to Eurostat, there are 509 million people in the EU. And the World Health Organization estimates that 0.3% of these people are blind. This is about 1.5 million people have visual impairment in the EU. Of those 1.5 million people, approximately 10% are totally blind. And of those who are totally blind, up to 70% have non-24, or the 110,000 that I quoted you. Therefore, the prevalence of non-24 in the EU is approximately 2.3 per 10,000. But in the totally blind, it's, it's 7 out of 10. So it's very prevalent in the totally blind population. As I mentioned earlier, non-24 affects people from birth to the elderly. And I'm very excited um, that we at Vanda are in, engaging in clinical studies in pediatric populations. There's currently no therapy, no medicine available for children who have non-24. And we are starting some studies next year to investigate a treatment that has received FDA and EMA approval. And we're studying this, uh, this medicine to see, to identify what's the appropriate dose for those patients, pediatric patients, whether it's safe for pediatric patients, and whether it works, whether it's efficacious in pediatric patients. And um, if you know of any parents who might might be interested in enrolling their children, I um, had the pleasure a couple weeks ago to speak with the president of the Parents with Blind Children in Germany. And he described how devastating this disorder can be for the families of children who have non-24. It really affects the entire family because if you have children and you know how important sleep is for their behavior, especially when they're three years old, and how important it is for their education, and also, very importantly, if a small child is not sleeping, that means the mother and father are not sleeping. So it infects the entire family because a small
small child who's not sleeping and a, a mother who's not sleeping, it's going to have repercussions on the mother's ability to, to be a parent to the entire family. And it's also very disruptive to the other children in the family. So we are conducting these studies and we, are, um, we have a patient registry to ideally enroll people who might be interested in participating in these studies. And if you are interested in, in learning more about it, there's two ways. One is to send an email to info at non24registry.com or there's a website where you can enroll directly into the registry and it's www dot non registrycom So I'd like to wrap up with a few key points that I'd like you to take home. And those are that circadian rhythms are fluctuations of biological processes and behaviors that occur on a roughly 24-hour period. 